第一コート、アンパイア、高畑拓、日本、サービス役、スーツショット、シュート。Two matches done. Stark contrast to what we've had the preceding two days. These ones have been pretty long, haven't they? And we're now into the third match of the day here. Semi finals day at the first ever Kumamoto Masters Japan. It's women's singles again. Bei Wan Zhang of the United States. Seventh seed takes on sixth seed from Indonesia, Gregoria Mariska Chunjung. As we said earlier, it was uh, refreshing to see in the quarterfinals to see seven member associations, sorry, eight member associations, all of them different in the quarterfinals. And four seeds in the semis. Who will play Chen Yufei in the final? Who looks, by the way, very, very good. It's going to be a daunting task for either one of these players now. America, moves in, walks in first, followed by Gregoria Mariska Tunjun, who's got a fair bit of strapping on her left knee there. It's been a very good year for Bei Wen Tang. Talked about how she has managed to get herself a physio. A lot of it is self-financed as well, which is so impressive when you're playing in that part of the world, which doesn't get that much exposure in, in North America, to be able to then start getting results. Superb. She leads the head-to-head 3-2 -head between the two of them. The last time they met was in the Singapore Open in June, which Tun Jung won in three. Sorry. <laughs> and? Caught and okay. Service. <laughs> a little bit of fun before we get things going. So Pei Wan Tang is now 33 years of age, 168 centimetres tall, born in China, and then actually went on to represent uh, Singapore for moving to the United States. Currently playing at her best ever ranking. She also achieved that back in 2017. Tai Tzu Ying had to retire with a foot injury in that uh, quarterfinal match, which, uh, that's is why we see here, Baywin here was one all at that point. She was six uh, love up as well. Tun Jung is uh, 2,464 centimetres tall and playing at her best ever ranking. And there's also been a very good year for her overall. She hasn't dropped a game yet. Tung Jung has uh, got to her name, uh, former World Junior Champion in 2017 and won title in the World Tour of the Spain Masters earlier this year. She was a runner-up at the Malaysia Masters as well. Takuma Takabatake is the umpire. Service judge is Su Xiaofeng from China. And on the World Tour, three titles to Bei Wen Zhang's name. India Open in 2018. And this year, she has been in four finals. Two runners up finishes at the Olio Masters and the Taipei Open. Ready to pray. And then a long, long wait for her. Her first title in five years at the Australia Open, where she beat Kim Gutton in the final. And then at the recent Hilo Open. Super 300, she won that as well. Thoughts on this one, Chris? I probably would say it's, it's a 50-50. I know I sit on, the, sit on the wall with a lot of them, but you've got world ranking seven against world ranking nine. Um, they're very well matched. I think Baywin's 
She is playing to a very high level and quite a unique one. She's 13 matches unbeaten, which is quite a, a unique thing to have in badminton just because it's very hard to win tournament after tournament. She won her last two tournaments, um, Hilo Open and the, the Pan, Am, and Pan Am Champs. Oh my yeah, that's, a, that's a good point, actually. Very that was recently as well, wasn't it? In uh, October. Santiago. She would be one of the uh, the main draws, of course. And uh, yeah, it's a good streak that she has. Chris, uh, you don't see that many women singles players at this age as well, 33, still in the, in, in the top 10, for example. It's not so common now, is it? No, no, I would agree. I'd say the other amazing thing was, you know, she obviously had that tragedy at the Olympics with regarding tore her Achilles tendon and went brilliant shot. And when you're a slightly, I, mean, she, I wouldn't call her old, but she's an older player. Yeah. Getting injuries it is a bit trickier just because it feels even harder to come back. Um, mm. Just when you're at the later stage of your career. I mean, for her, I hope she keeps going. She's playing incredible at the moment. Yes, it's lovely to sort of have that sort of second coming because she had that about six years ago. And she's come back into, into that peak again, hasn't she? Yeah. I mean, Which it is be, unusual. Yeah. Also, it'll be so interesting to find out how it actually works for her just because living in Vegas, it's a unique way to to play badminton and everything like that. And the setup in America is slightly different to some other countries. Yeah. As far as I understand, there's not a really a national governing body assisting it. It's more players doing it themselves. Um, Which makes it even more impressive, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. But she's obviously got a setup that works. And she, she is a fantastic player. There's so many positives and negatives of, of each situation for different players. Yeah. When you're on your own, essentially, you have more control, which can be a good thing, but also can be a negative thing. And how the finances can work, and right. training partners, and coaching, and strength conditioning coaches, physios. Yeah, as you said, a lot of it falls on you. You've got to take that personal responsibility for a lot of things that I guess many players take for granted, right? Because they've got their association looking yeah. after it. But then a positive can be you can choose, you know, you can choose your own physio, you can choose your yeah. own coach, you can choose right. your sparring partner. So you do have a bit more freedom and say, if there's any situations where you're not comfortable with it in a federation, it's very difficult because you don't really have control over anything. that as well in the Olympics in the Canada Open she got that a recurrence not so bad not the left Achilles was at the Olympics obviously as you mentioned was a massive massive blow for her and I think any major injury in, in a player's career is so much harder than you can ever think to come back from because it's major major surgery but then it's it's also the recovery the belief to think can you come back in badminton as a sport where you know there's so many different aspects of obviously agility speed explosive power fitness it's so important in the sport and if you're not a hundred percent we've seen her before with Baywin, she's an incredible mover around the court she covers the court so well retrieves the shuttle so well and if she, her movement isn't there she's not the same player and she's done so well to come back and in such good shape considering the severity of her injury What I also like is um, she, she's fully cognizant of the fact that she's, at this stage of her career, she calls herself grandma as well on social media. 
uh, and kind of has fun with it, but she fully embraces what, what's, what's been going on. Tunjung up by four here. Tundra has an incredible touch at the net, and the shot wasn't too bad, but Baywin's right at the net waiting for that. She has to lift it. Incredible touch from Gregoria there at the net. Put away by Tung. Yeah, great placement from Baywin on the overhead here. Good spin. See the lift's fractionally short, and that gives her that chance. Tunjung has been in 11 semi finals on the World Tour. She's won four of them out of uh, those 11. She lost her last two Hong Kong Open to uh, Akane Yamaguchi and the Japan Open to Herbing Jiao. Tung has been in 33 semi-finals, won 20 of them, including her last two. who leads by four here in the first game interval. Great turn then, it's shot quality from that there. See it clips the tape. See the shuttle tumbling so it's so hard to lift it and the lift's so short.
of that one, uh, Tunjung. Yeah, she reads this so well here. You can see anticipating where she thinks the shot's going to go. Great pick up, oh, great pick up. Well, she was stranded, wasn't she? Yeah, she only missed it by a fraction. Yeah. Tunjung would not have got there. A little bit of a let off. Tunjung's set uh, played. 55 matches this year, 36 wins, 19 defeats. Not a bad year. Ding and Tong, even better. 64 matches, 46 wins, 18 right. defeats. Wow. Great name change from both players there. shot from Gregory and then perfect net shot from Baywin. So hard to control the shot when it hits the tape. Oh, really well played. Moving our opponent around to jump. Yeah, Baywin's on this year, 10 tournaments where she's reached quarterfinals or above. Really been a very good year for her. players. Just misses this, the right shot, there was a big gap there. Nine semi-finals against top ten players and 23 out of 94 matches overall. Easily put away by Tunjung. That was brilliant from Gregoria. Stepping up, holding, punching a corner, taking it early, holding, there you go, punching a corner again, and then right at the front. It's impossible for Bayouin to get that away. shot that was from Tunjun. This is the biggest lead she's had now. Five points. Yeah, and that was played to absolute perfection. The shot was already going to be good, and then it clips the tape, and it's even better. Tunjun has played in six semi-finals against top ten opposition. Only won once before. That was earlier this year in the Spain Masters when she beat Carolina Marin. Great result for her there. Overall, against top 10 opposition, she has won 15 out of 72 matches. This is a time now where, you know, I would say for Baywin, it would 
be nice for her to have a coach. I don't know the exact reason why she doesn't, if it's the financial side Probably of it. Or, financial, right? or if she chooses, she doesn't want one, but it's so tough. That's oh. a brilliant shot again. But it's so tough when you're out there and things aren't quite going your way. Another perspective would be helpful, right? 100%. It's so hard to figure out yourself, because if you could figure out yourself, you'd be changing it instantly. But whereas someone mm. who's behind your court can give you that guidance, that help, that support, that reassurance. Yeah, the, the one who bucks that trend is someone we're going to be seeing later on, Joe Tian Chen. Yeah, and <laughs> it's one of those that obviously it's his decision and yeah. he's happy with it, but I don't personally right. understand it just because sure. of the way I was. But, sure. you know, whatever works for the for player you. is the integral yeah. part. The player's got to feel happy, confident. And it definitely works for him. Oh, what a shot from Baywood. Eight game points here for Tunjung. Oi. I don't think what? Gregoria thought that was going over. Yeah. I think <laughs> she even surprised herself. <laughs> well, she wraps that one up fairly quickly. Tunjung. See here. You can see even like a little leg kick. That was a great shot, that wasn't it, for Baywood? Well, there's a bit of, uh, I think maybe a bit of bleeding going on in uh, the right knee of Tunjung. Nothing serious. She's taking the first game, 21 12. Very different feel this no. women's singles match so far, Chris, to what we saw earlier between Chen Yufei and So Young. Yeah, I think in the, the first game, Gregoria played incredibly well, um, stamped her authority. She's an incredibly talented player, Gregoria. So, almost had too much time on that. There's a more favourable end here. Or is it just too? It's too marginal. I mean, I'm, unless you go out and play, you can't get a true feeling. It definitely mm. seems the the end Baywin's at is is the favourable end. By how much? It's mm. hard to say. And I do feel it's been slightly, only slightly different each day. Right. But overall, if we're talking about the the big picture compared to some other arenas. Yeah. I'd say yes, there is a drift here. But is it a massive drift? Mm. I personally don't think so compared to some halls like Singapore, where it is extreme. Your personal preference was the less drift, the better? For me, 100%, yeah. <laughs> Often when there was a big drift, it didn't go very well for me. I think a big difficult thing we have in Europe was uh, getting used to the conditions. Air conditioning, right? Well, it's just 
we never train in a in a drifty hole. Right. Generally, we don't have a, an arena to train in. First of all, and second of all, we don't have aircon. So getting used to that was very difficult. Whereas some of the um, Asian arenas, you know, they had that. It was a normal yeah. training environment for them. So, so when they go yeah. to a drifty hall, you could see they were very, very comfortable. Right. Loads of Europeans dealt with it really well. I think to me personally, I was. I'd always found it a little bit trickier. Did you guys not try like put some fans on or something to recreate that? Or well, we did, but nothing ever worked. And the hall we trained, uh, sorry, the, re well, the the venue we trained in was was far too small, far too small. And so it was difficult to exactly. Yeah. You try and recreate, and it was so fake, it, it ruined the game. The shells were doing really peculiar things. Right. So unless you have an arena that's big enough to be able to do it in a sensible way, it's quite hard to recreate it. And it's still a problem they have in the the venue they train at in England. Wow. Brilliant shot, incredible reverse slides. So deceptive. That's what I mean about Gregoria, she's such a gifted player. She's got almost any shot from everywhere. To say is, as the year's gone on, over, well, let's say 12 months, right. she has improved yeah, so much. tremendously, absolutely agree. this year where she's made quarterfinals and more. Japan open at 7.50, so Japan's been a nice little hunting ground for her. from her. Seven, eight. One she probably feels she should have made. I think double frustration because the string went. Mm. And in singles, when your string goes, you're in big trouble. In doubles, you can just about get away with it because you can try and get off court, change your racket quickly and get back on. I think I've only ever seen one player actually manage it, which was Victor Axelson, but he still lost the rally, but somehow... He got back yeah. to the get the yeah, yeah, wow. put the put the lift in the sky dashed off got back on <laughs> really good from Gregoria great interception there and then even a little lovely reverse to make sure that she's not going to hit it out when you reverse it it takes a bit of the speed off the shot but makes it quite deceptive to be able to determine how hard the shot was coming. Brilliant defense from Bay, which is doing so well to stay in this rally. But that's the thing, it's 
it's the relentless pressure from Gregoria. Tundra was controlling it the whole exactly. time. Exactly, and this is the thing. And Baywin, she, she is a fantastic retriever of the shuttle, but how many times yeah. have taken it late? Oh, taking it late. And it's just continuously taking the shuttle late until eventually she can't handle the stress and the pressure there. And it's just too late. And this is what Gregoria has done so well in this match so far. Good little period here for Tunjung. And at the interval, she is uh, four up here, having taken the first game as well. Well, we saw her receive a little bit of treatment from her own coach during the interval of the uh, previous game. Uh, Gregoria Mariska Tunjong, and now I think it's uh, something different. This looks like a blister on a toe, maybe. How common is a blistering issue for players? Yeah, I mean, very, very common because the twisting, the turning that you have to do, your foot does move within the sock or within the shoe, so it's very, very, very common to get blisters. A lot of players might wear two socks to try and reduce the chance of blisters. That's for some tape, I think I saw her say. For anyone who you know pays, has blisters, just the, the pain of that as well, rubbing. It's yeah, it just just depends if it's a you know if it's a bad one, then it can just cause you a fraction yeah. of hesitation on your movement. You can't push off quite the same. I mean, I've got to say, Kagura has been moving pretty well. Right. So I wouldn't have known she had any issue underneath her foot. But she just talked to a coach to ask for something. Yeah, they're just asking for the correct tape. She wants that the same probably have, tape right? that's on her knee, just so that it sticks better to skin. Yeah. Because some tape otherwise doesn't stick, and before you know it, it's moving it's in moving. your shoe and yeah. it's making it more annoying. But the, but these are the kind of margins we're talking about that you, what makes a player ex comfortable. You don't want anything else that you're not used to, right? But this is the thing: if she puts it on and it's moving around, it makes it even worse than not having right. it on. So you know you want to put it on to reduce the friction that that's being caused, but you also want it to actually stick. And if it's not quite the tape that you want, well, oh, Baywon Zhang coming over to offer. That's, That's really cool. nice to see. Yeah, wow. Really like to see that. Lovely. And the crowd appreciating that moment as well. Incredible sportsmanship from, from Baywin there. Waiting for the uh, doctor to come back, I suppose, to apply it. Now this, th sorry, Chris, go on. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say whenever you have a break of this duration, because this has been pretty long now, it's not very common in badminton because we're a continuous sure. sport. So, so important that no one loses their concentration that when we start again, yeah. both players are fully focused straight away. Uh, I was actually going to ask you something related to that was, does this actually help Bay One right now, given that she's trailing? <laughs> yes and no. It, it, it just depends because the integral part is, which can sound silly to some people, but it's so easy for your concentration to waver yeah. in something like this because we don't have durations of this length in sure. badminton as in a pause. This is unusual, yeah. This is very, very, very long. Um, so as soon as they restart, also you get a bit cold. Mm. It's all these things. You know, Baywin's trying to kind of keep moving. Gregor has been sat down and... Yeah. It's so important that when they restart, you almost want to have a long rally, which sounds strange, but uh, you, you want to get yourself back in, the group, get right. yourself going again. 
I just hope that it stays on the tape and it's issue over and it's not a, a an extreme blood blister or anything like that. Ooh, yeah. And you know, sometimes that also might have a, an effect where your part of you is still thinking about it as well. I know you've got to draw a line under it. But yeah. Does it sometimes linger in the mind? It can do because you can get frustrated that you're not quite moving as well as you should be, um, and then you almost let it uh, you overthink it. Lovely bit of uh, camaraderie between the players there. So let's see, we'll be keeping an eye on her movement now. Gregoria Tunjung. 11-7, break. First point since that the break was to Tunjung. Yeah, and that's a cheap one after the break. Mm. Cause it's not that Baywin can now play on. She knows uh, Gregorio's got a, let's say, a very, very small issue with her foot, but you, you want to have a long rally after such a long break. <laughs> Two very quick points since then. Misjudge that one. Sometimes you can give your opponent that extra bit of belief because they think, well, hold on a sec, well, uh, maybe my opponent isn't quite moving as well as they were. there from Baywin. Incredible control. Good boy, just showing she can hit almost any shot from anywhere. That winner kind of came from nothing. Still maintains her lead here, the Indonesian. That was inside. The other thing, of course, is that whoever wins this has to take on a rampant Chen Yufei at the moment. Brilliant shot from Gloria. Fantastic holding skill. Yeah, I'd say Chen Yufei so far in this tournament, she has played absolutely incredible. What a shot there, Tunjo. Yeah, great variation again. I think it looked like she was going to go straight. Now the biggest lead she's enjoyed over 
Bei Wenzhong in the second game. Six points, three away from the place in the final. She's trying to move the shuttle around, which is obviously, you know, the correct thing to do, but she's just trying to play a fraction too tight and the unforced errors are just sneaking in. And again, simple mistake. 20, match point, 20. Eight match points for Tunjung. It's good. Tunjung just too good today. She's into her third final of 2023 after a pretty straightforward win over Bei Wen Tung. But despite a lengthy break to treat what looked to be a blister. But she's going to have to be right on top of the game, isn't she? In the final against Chen Yufei. Yeah, I think it's going to be a big, big challenge tomorrow, but she showed how, how good she is in regards to the shot quality, the variation of shots, the skill level. Big smiles now from her. Tunjung. Only the second time she's ever beaten a fellow top 10 player in a semi-final. That is by far our quickest match today. It would have been even quicker had it not been for the injury delay, you feel. Actually, she did really well after that treatment. So Indonesian Gregorio Mariska Tunjun, the sixth seed, beats seventh seed Baywon Tung of the United States, 21-12, 21-13 in 36 minutes. And coming up next, we have more mixed doubles action for you. Feng Yangtze and Huang Dongping, the third seeds from China, take on the second seeds from Japan, Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino.